and um, welcome everybody. Um, can I just, I'll give you a statement with regarding recordings. I remind committee members that the public session of this committee, of this meeting has been, is being recorded and will be made available on the Bayapeni Regional Council website following the meeting and archived for a Sorry, period of three years. For those members of the public here today, all care will be taken to maintain your privacy. However, as a visitor in the public gallery, your presence may be recorded. By remaining in the public ga gallery, it is understood your consent is given if your image is inadvertently broadcast. I also remind all present that local government decision-making affords no protection to councillors, council officers, and the public for comments made during meetings and are subsequently challenged in the court of law and determined to be slanderous. On that merry note, I call for apologies, and I so far have apologies from Mayor Gary Weber and Jess Andrews of Wakatotahi. Are there any further apologies? Uh, Mr Chair, um, I'm an apology for early departure. I have a, a, tangi, a tangi to attend to down south. Thank you. That, that's noted. Would someone move that the apologies be accepted? Councillor Browning, seconded by uh, Mayor Turner. All those in favour, please say aye. Against, carried. Uh, public forum, there is none. Items not on the agenda. Um, the, we, we need you to move to agree to, um, oh, we've got to confirm these now. Okay. Okay, so um, I need a resolution to accept the late items, and these are the um, Regional Public Transport Plan uh, Subcommittee hearings. Um, date of the 17th of August and the, um, is it in the 19th of August? I think we'll do that. The hearing minutes? Yeah. The 19th of August and the deliberations minutes the 31st of August. Yeah, so the deliberation minutes also on the 31st of August. Um, moved and seconded that they, um, the reason for this is that they, um, they can't be carried out because of the case we have a different committee for the new training. So they've been moved and seconded. All those in favour, please say aye. Against, carried. Um, order of business. There's no change that I know about. Are there any declarations of um, conflicts of interest? There are none. Public excluded business to be transferred into the open. There is none. Previous minutes of the um, council meeting of the 23rd of June. It's on page nine of your agenda. Can I first of all have someone move that? Is that true and correct record? Councillor Nees move. Second it. I'll second it. All those in favour, please say aye. Against, carry. Are there any matters arising from that meeting of the 23rd of June? There being none, we move straight along. Now we have a presentation this morning uh, from um, Kirsty Slater uh, and Gareth Griffins um, uh, on behalf of CCS Disability Action. And um, um, Good morning to both of you and welcome. Um, you've got um, you've got a good ten minutes. We we want some time for questions, but uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Any seconds? Put the phone off. And um, yeah, <coughs> thank you for that. Um, Kirsty and I have come here today. Um, to get our thoughts on the um, uh, an idea we had about our services locally, um, who's really looking at a way of monitoring bus services locally in the in the Toronto region, and uh, 
Kirsty's got a lot of experience of buses locally, so we thought, why not try and do something to monitor it? Um, this is Kirsty here, so she's um, very much involved in disability work. Um, she's chairman of People First locally, and she does an amazing amount to connect with disabled people. Not only that, she sees a lot of disabled people on the transport network. And if you get to talk to her, she has some really neat little insights into not just the bus services, but the sort of support she gets out of her in the community with other people that she knows. And yeah, it's been really interesting just talking to her. So we were out in a cafe a little while ago locally and we were discussing um, her, her transport around the community and what she was doing. And um, I said to her, wouldn't it be neat if you could have an opportunity to uh, give some input on this? Uh, because we all know that, well, I think it would be hard not to realise that the, the council has has made a huge effort to um, improve the bus services over the last few years. Um, and, you know, that's self-evident with, with the access. And I know something Kirsty's um, been very um, appreciative of. It's just the amount of money that's gone into it. But one thing we felt was that it's not monitored on a personal level um, because you can put the infrastructure in, but you don't always know what's going on um, with the, the service, effectively the service. And that's why we came up with this idea that it would be really neat to find a simple way to monitor the service. Um, yeah, so we, we, we made contact with the council and uh, then we, we came up with a format to try and look at bus services. And uh, Kirsty will probably just say a, a little bit about that now. Can okay. I welcome you, Kirsty? Can I welcome you, Kirsty? And um, just to let those know, because they probably won't pick it up on Zoom, um, Kirsty is sight impaired, and um, um, it's always a, a challenge to, to uh, come to this uh, a public forum like this, but we really appreciate that you're, you're here, Kirsty, and feel very relaxed. There is, uh, this is a safe environment, is all I'll say to you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to this meeting. Um, I find it, found, I've and that it's really important. Uh, it's really important from a person with a um, visual impairment and a learning disability point of view to get to get um, this opportunity for the council to actually see what it's like, what it's like out in the community. And because you you may you may know um, you may not see what's going out in the community. Um, it can be can be um, difficult. Uh, I've just got a little bit. Um, Bit more to so, so I've got I I am vision impaired. I've been using I've lived in Taranga for um, the last ten to fifteen years. Um, haven't been easy with trying to get transport um, because of the um, transport sometimes being a bit not so good. <laughs> um, I I personally have had 
some buff rubber play. Um, play some pretty, pretty mean things, but it's, it's overall, it's pretty good. Um, so, um, I, I feel it can be improved, but I don't know how it could be improved. I'm chairman of Taranga People First. That, that's, I've been with chairman for them for four years this year. Um, that has been an excellent experience. But that's a, Bus, the bus, um, bus trip, um, some of the bus routes are not very easy to, to learn, to learn different bus routes that can be, um, quite hard from a vision impaired or blind person's, um, point of view. Um, there are three that I know, know, um, really well and it's the 55, 59 and CT. I find some drivers can be pretty rude with um pretty rude and just not not wanting to help you. Um, but overall they are um really good really good to um, people um, not only with uh, learning and learning disability but also physical physical disability and also I I have had to use a walking frame at times um, that also has its um, barriers <laughs> To get around, but um, sometimes I feel the bus drivers need to be trained a bit more, better in in the sakes of um, knowing how how it is for a blind person or partially sighted person to actually. Um, Access the bus, bus um, transport. Transport. Um, I don't quite know how that could be be um, done, but overall, it's pretty good. Um, I do have a learning disability, so. Sometimes I don't understand what what they're trying, what what they why they do things the way they do them, and it can be difficult for me to actually understand what they're understanding what they're trying to do. I've had oh. I've got a form that's in front of, that's in front of all of you. Um, that that's this sorry, that's this, this one here that we've started filling in. Kirsty's been doing one. Uh, I've been doing one with Kirsty, and we've been filling loads of these in as a trial run. And overall, they're good. Um, some. Um, some of them are, um, have got go to um, over and above um, what they um, what they expected. Um, but they usually do get the bus drivers that are 
um, quite poor, um, can be quite poor. We um, figured the way we figured 10 minutes over the time um, of the bus is meant to arrive at the bus stop um, was um, too, it was um, too late. I find the speech bus stops that you have around Taronga are really good when they're speaking. <laughs> I have come across some bus, bus, bus speech bus stops that um, don't talk. <laughs> That's fine. And I've heard of um, there's one one at um, Bayfield that's been totally vandalised, <laughs> which is a um, pain in the neck because um, it's it's really it's a real need um, for for um, April and sixth of May. Can I just butt in? Sorry, but the forms here that Kirsty's been doing are really a little bit um, a bit of a movable feast. You know, it's very difficult to get an exact science with assessing. But we found that when we looked, we came up with some criteria for what a really good service, excellent, good, and neutral sort of service, and a poor service would entail. And I think Kirsty's done a really good job of. Um, being fair-minded about this because she does appreciate the bus service. It's not um, easy to do these forms at times, but I think we've come up with enough of a good criteria. Um, so we came up with criteria about what, what that service would look like. And um, yeah, so at the moment, as I say, we're keeping all these as a record, and then we're going to probably average out some sort of feel about what, what the service is like. But as well as that, what we wanted to do was a, an area of comments. We wanted those comments to be known, and particularly if there was things that were pertinent to issues over training and that sort of thing for bus drivers or just the way they approach things. And what, what I mean, one example would be, wasn't it, that we found that if they didn't pull up right along near the curve, it's difficult for you, isn't it? That sort of thing. Um, and then the, I, th I think I sent through a six monthly uh, review. Um, we haven't really thought all that out fully, but I think that will be a good time frame to look at what the service was like within six months. So, yeah, that, that's really it. There's, uh, just to provide a record of what, what the service was like. Excellent. Uh, are you um, happy to take questions from the committee? Yeah, sure. Yes, um, Mayor Turner. Oh, thank you, Kirsty. That's really good feedback, and I'm really interested. Have you this form that you've designed, which looks pretty good to me actually? Have you distributed it to other people to use, or are you just currently just using it yourself? I've currently, um, as far as I know, I'm currently just using it myself. We did have another lady um, at CCS, and I did suggest that she might get involved with this as well. Uh, I think it, I think it's excellent. Thank you for your presentation. That's really really helpful, and it, that is exactly the type of feedback that this committee needs to be receiving. Um, so thank you very much for being courageous and coming and doing that. Councillor Thurston is on Zoom. He's got a long history with, with CCS at a national level. Councillor Thurston. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Firstly, I'd just like to acknowledge two colleagues from the sector uh, and a very warm welcome to you, Kirsty and Gareth. Um, as the Chairman's just referred to, I'm a past National Pressman, as you, as you know, of CCS Disability Action, um, and it's great to have you with us. Um, I've been incredibly proud of our Council, particularly in the last triennium, for the changes and the initiatives that have been implemented for people with disabilities. Um, as we all know uh, one in five people in Tauranga have a profound disability that impacts on their daily life. Um, just a couple of questions and a couple of comments. In terms of the accessibility concession uh, that we rolled out in July last year that gives free 
transport uh, on, the, on our public system to people with profound disabilities and lifelong disabilities. Um, Kirsty, how has, how has that been received? And uh, have you found it necessary to take a carer with you on these occasions? And just some, I know my colleagues would love to have some feedback from someone who's, dare I say, got skin in the game. So how has that accessibility concession been received uh, by uh, your community? Um, I've found the, the accessibility um, sometimes I've needed a um, plus one, but um, my support people want me to get out in as independently as I can um, with with the routes routes of the buses that I know and the buses that bus routes that I know the fifty nine fifty five in the CT and the big card big big card big card is absolutely awesome and thank you very much for setting setting up the free buses to people with um, pe people's disabilities that are never ever going to be able to um, drive because I've got not only a visual visual impairment but I'm also I've got epilepsy too so and I would like to thank the council as well my daughter's just is um, uh, autistic and she just struggles to get anywhere um, with, with change and things like that. So the, the fact that she's now being able to get a B card is just going to be life changing for her. I mean, literally, you know, to get her to be able to meet me without having to fiddle around with money and that sort of thing. It's just a massive thing. Chairman, just two quick comments you could describe as supplementaries. Um, one, can our staff, uh, and Greg in particular, pick up on those comments of Kirsty's with regards bus drivers' attitude, in particular their rudeness? I don't think we need to get into a discussion today, but I think we need to address that uh, with the operators. Um, and the other thing is, I know Commissioner Sell will, will have picked up the comments that Kirsty made around infrastructure issues. So, but uh, other than that, Councillor Von Dettelson, you know, I just urge you to engage these people um, in your community engagement committee that you have. I know Mandy Gudgeon was involved in it, and uh, and I really do just would like to acknowledge these um, two key leaders from the sector. Kia ora. Thank you. Um, um, great. Uh, thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you, Councillor Thurston, for those comments. I uh, also would like to um, thank you for the feedback today and taking the time to talk to us. Um, in particular, I would welcome um, any feedback from the surveys that you are doing, um, so we can see what is actually being said. Um, I, I agree with Mayor Turner made the comments was nice and simple, and I think we are going to get some good insights from them. So I'd love to personally have access to the information as you do, um, do collect it. We are also working on a number of other fronts as well. You mentioned the audibles, um, audible announcements. We are working with uh, Waka Katai to see if we can get co-funding from them to see if we can extend those audibles as well. So certainly understand the points you're raising, but look forward to further discussion with you. Thank you. I'll leave it. I'll, I'll leave the forms we've done so far. We've just got a few here that, that we filled in. Kirsty and Gerda, thank you very much for um, making the effort to come and talk to us. Um, we really appreciate it. We know it's not easy, uh, but you've done a great job. Um, well done, both of you. Thank you. Uh, I would just like to thank Kirsty as well. Yeah. And just uh, um, the last comment I've got to say, and some the audio bus stops are excellent. Although some people, um, some people, unfortunately, uh, really not that, um, not that. Um, nice and um, some of them have been, one of them that I know, for, know of has been vandalised, <laughs> which is a bit, um, but I'm sure when you've got um, people who you can't see um, or can't um, read. But thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to come and speak um, to you. Thank you. Um, 
Uh, we're we're going to move on now to the um, page 20, page 20, the chairman's uh, report. Uh, and before I do that, we've got um, two uh, members of our council in the room, and we've also got Matamoana on Zoom, who are not actual members of this committee, but um, I've asked them to come to the top table. I think this is our last meeting. And, and if you have uh, anything you want to say, you can, I'll give you speaking rights as well, as long as you understand that I could withdraw them very fast if you speak too much. But um, um, but you do at this stage have speaking rights so that um, you can contribute because I, I think public transport is something that we we all it's a big expense item for us and, and we should all take in this so I'm really pleased to see three non-members at this committee. Just um, before I hand over to Greg, is it Greg, who's presenting this one? Yes, um, before I pass over to Greg to, and he can introduce his team, um, just to, to note myself that we have uh, had a change of ownership of, of the bus company and um, Greg, I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that, but I'm looking forward to a really positive um, um, interaction with them, the new owners. Um, it was probably difficult for our staff when you have a bus company that's got a, a business on the market, they, they, they were probably looking for um, as seamless a transition as possible. So they didn't want to make too many changes. And uh, so that, that was made big demands on our staff. And I thank staff, um, and I'll, I'll use this opportunity to thank our staff um, who have been fantastic this year in very trying times. Um, and, and in particular, the, the data collection as a result of the VCAD uh, has made a huge difference uh, for me and from personally um, analysing, so I'm sure it's for you as well. And um, I look forward to at the end of this meeting, anybody who does want some uh, help on how to access that data that will be available after the meeting. So without further ado, Greg, um, pass over to you. Uh, and members, thank you very much, um, Chair. I'd like to introduce, I have three of my staff here, Lorraine, Chris and Oliver, who will be supporting me because I need lots of support um, in this committee. My first uh, time I'm in front of the Public Transport Committee, it's certainly a pleasure to be here. For those of you who are not aware, um, I did a piece of work with Council um, earlier this year in, in May and June, reviewing how the Council was operating in its transport space and submitted to Council, in the Regional Council here, some recommendations as to a way forward. And one of those was to bring together a, a more cohesive combined transport operation, which I then returned to do. And it's been a pleasure being here for the last uh, nearly three months now, uh, bringing the team together into that, uh, that, that combined unit. Um, I was Chief Executive of Greater Wellington Regional Council until the end of last year. Um, of course, heading the Metlink operation down there, which is uh, entertaining every day and continues to be so uh, after I left. So just, uh, it's a pleasure to, re to, pre to introduce the um, chairperson's report um, uh, for you to receive just a few comments from me. And I would also ask uh, through the chair if Oliver could make a few comments as well. That's on one particular item I would like to uh, just highlight. But just from me quickly, um, before Councillor Thompson mentions it, um, I should mention the new um, approach from the government, which is termed as a standard public transport framework. And then Councillor Thompson, you don't mind me referencing you. I think you see this as a great opportunity for us uh, in the future. And so I just want to bring the committee's attention to that. It is not a regulation yet, but we are hopeful that it will be in place before the end of this national election term. Um, and it does open up some new possibilities for all the councils, including ourselves. Most a uh, high profile one will be the opportunity to potentially actually bring in some operations if we wish to in house. Uh, so, in the bus services, it could even be that we could deploy our own assets, our own buses, and our own drivers. So, this gives a new, um, a new bit of weaponry for us to use to, uh, to deliver better service for our community. Um, the chair mentioned the NZ bus change of ownership, which is referenced in 212 in the report. 
um, and that has now taken place um, last month. That transfer has gone through. And I just want to mention to the committee that we have met with the new management and uh, I'm certainly very pleased with the support so far from, from the new operators of, and owners of, of NZ Bus uh, Kinetic New Zealand. 213 references the perennial driver shortages. Um, and this continues to be an acute problem nationwide, not just uh, across our region. Um, personally, having arrived into, the, into this new role of Transport Director in July, I think it took only four or five weeks before we had just a fortnight period um, of quite dramatic departures of, of bus drivers and certainly caught me, caught my attention very sharply. And uh, there's an item later on in the agenda and the public excluded as to some of our responses to that. Um, certainly what I saw over the last um, four or five weeks, um, this issue is now escalating to a point where it is extremely acute and threatens even our reduced timetable, frankly. Um, so you know, it's that side of the debate rather than when can we return to uh, to a full timetable, unfortunately. We will make further comments on that later on the agenda. 218 in the Chair's report on page 25 references the Wakapatai Transport Choices Package. Just bringing that to your attention as well. This was a bit of an adventure for your staff. Um, flurry of excitement as it was announced, and we thought there could be an opportunity to go and get some additional funding for some of our key initiatives. Um, it was a bit iterative, I'd say, um, in its development, we found once we got into it, that the preference was leaning strongly towards infrastructure investments. So some of our initial work, initial submissions uh, for funding was more on services and um, I guess more OPEX side. So we had to change tack. And in the report, we detailed the two submissions we did put in and are hopeful for getting support on from the transport choices packages from, from central government. Particularly exciting, um, I'll refer to as the uh, potential of getting additional funding for the Rotorua bus refresh. Um, if we can get that additional funding, we could bring that refresh substantially forward. So getting pretty optimistic about that. Um, 219 references the, um, sounds like a very dry and uh, <laughs> formal sort of title, the Public Transport Services Infrastructure Business Case. And to the Chair, if you wouldn't mind, just, if I could just ask Ollie to make a few comments on that, because we are making really good progress on this. We did have a discussion with the Joint Committee uh, with Taranga City Council a couple of weeks ago as well, so keen for this uh, committee to be aware of it as well. So if I could ask Oliver to make some comments here. Oliver, thank you. Thank you, Greg. Uh, and through the chair, just before I go into the detail, I think it's just important to, to say that this is a project that's been delivered in partnership. Uh, so funding partners for this uh, are ourselves, uh, Taranga City and Auckland Kotai. Uh, we also have a project steering group that has the funding partners, uh, but also has representation from Mana Whenua, uh, and the, uh, the Western uh, Bay of Plenty District Council as well. So if you cast your minds back three or four years, uh, you'll all remember the UFTI process uh, that was undertaken, which was a programme business case. Uh, this single stage business case uh, is the project that's tasked with bringing UFTI to life and delivering that connected sensors network. Uh, and this business case, as the name suggests, will first of all explore the services that are required to support uh, the growth and the changing travel behaviours uh, as Toronto and the Western Bay grows, uh, and then explore the infrastructure required to both deliver and support the efficient running of those services. And the initial piece of work that's been undertaken uh, is the designing of the reference case. Uh, so this is a high level look at what the service provision will look like as we move forward, taking into account uh, the growth plans for Tauranga and the Western Bay uh, and trying to be really cognizant of how people's travel behaviour will change over time. Um, it's worth saying that this hasn't been an academic exercise. Uh, we've been really key to design something that will work for our communities uh, and move away from uh, and so that academic design of public transport. Um, this has got to work for our communities. Um, this has got to be customer focused and that's been at the heart uh, of the work that we've undertaken to date. In terms of the scope of the project, uh, we've got a 10 year horizon with a 30 year outlook. Uh, so we are predominantly looking at bus based solutions. That's not to say that we're not focusing on more invasive solutions to public transport, mass transit, et cetera. But with that 10 year horizon, we're really looking at what we can achieve with, with buses. Um, and then uh, just to, to make a note of things that are not in scope of this business case, uh, that's things such as public transport fares, 
parking uh, and wider behavior change. That's not to say those things aren't important, but just want to highlight that there are separate pieces of work being undertaken to really drill down into those very important topics. Uh, and this business case will be uh, will be cognizant uh, of the recommendations uh, when those various pieces of work are completed. So we've landed on a hybrid network, uh, and that is broadly a combination of through routing and hub and spoke. Uh, through routing uh, is incredibly useful because it allows us to connect a lot of our key centres identified through the IT work directly, which reduces the need for many of our customers to make transfers at areas of the network. Uh, that has the benefit of uh, improving uh, confidence in public transport, reducing journey time, uh, and hopefully significantly boosting uh, trust uh, and ultimately patronage on the network. As you'll know, we do have pockets of the uh, Western Bay area uh, and Tauranga area that are hard to serve uh, with, with fixed route PT uh, and therefore would be quite inefficient to serve with, with through routed services. Uh, so in those areas, uh, we've indicated that, that a hub and spoke arrangement uh, is likely to be better uh, feeding into key centres uh, where customers will have um, a variety of opportunities to, to continue on with their journey. Uh, what we've proposed uh, is future proof. We think it will be very uh, effective at supporting uh, growth, uh, but also we've been very, very careful not to preclude things such as other methods of delivering public transport in the future, uh, innovative things such as on demand, uh, also keeping options open in relation to park and ride, which, which could be used to complement this. So, uh, so we see this as uh, as a model uh, that can grow and be shaped uh, along with the wider city uh, and the, the sub-region uh, as things move forward. Uh, any questions, thank you. Councillor Dees. Thank you very much for that, um, that summary. Um, fair to say that I've had a lot of commentary over the past couple of weeks on our public transport network as we've had a campaign, um, election campaign underway and um, people's opinion of our service isn't very good. And one of the key things, particularly in the Western Bay I hear, um, is that we need park and rides. Um, there is no way that the majority of the people in the rural Western Bay can access our bus services um, and won't be able to um, without park and rides. So I was really concerned when I read page 26, which says, um, does not preclude other methods of service delivery, such as on demand and suburban areas and network, could also be complemented by park and ride sites, should these be progressed. Um, my position is they have to be progressed as soon as possible. And that um, the commentary seems very negative to me. It's like, you know, we, we might do them sometime in the future, but they're not necessary. That's the impression that that comment gives us. Um, and I have sensed previously that there's some reluctance, particularly from Karanga City Council, to actually progress park and rides. So what I'm asking is, is that truly the case? Is there negativity within the team towards park and rides? If so, why? Um, and how can we actually get some traction on this? Because the wider public think it's an absolute no-brainer and cannot understand why we're not doing it. Uh, through the chair, I can confirm that within the project team, there is no uh, negativity towards park and rides, and we've been very, very careful not to preclude them. The business case uh, will explore the potential benefit that they can bring uh, and how they can bolster uh, and, and hopefully get more people onto PT. So we will be exploring that um, with an open mind uh, with our partners. Um, but yeah, absolutely no, no negativity and, and, and no aspiration to uh, to exclude them from this process, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so I have next, um, Matt. Oh, sorry, Jay, this may be oh. up. Oh, Apologies. Yes. I do want to just um, alert the committee and uh, particularly the council to the fact that uh, park and ride, and this, I have extensive experience with park and ride, obviously from the Wellington context, uh, park and ride is not viewed particularly positively by current policy makers. Uh, centrally. So I think the issue will be beyond our own agreement. It will be a wider issue as well. It's whether it is supported uh, by Kuwaka Katai funding. 
Um, the minister particularly is not particularly uh, open to partner around further development. There's a belief that the transport network should feed more in integrally into destination points rather than through a private ride facility. That's not open, not necessarily for debate today. I just want to warn that if you are sensing some negativity or reluctance, it's not ours, but there's certainly a national policy issue to, to comprehend. Well, I would have to make a comment that if the government wants us to deliver on our emission reductions targets, they're going to have to change their approach. Thank you, and thank you for that clarification. Um, I have Mayor Turner, uh, Councillor Thompson, and then Commissioner Selwood in that order. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, I've got two questions, actually. One, one is uh, just regarding the change of ownership of the bus company. I'm assuming with that change over that they've literally just taken over the contracts as is, they haven't been extended or anything like that. Is that correct? Confirm that. So when you have a change of ownership, we are part of the approval process. Um, but the new owners inherit, they effectively take over the existing okay. business, which has the contracts in place. Okay, my second question is, um, well, I shouldn't be obvious, I suspect, but Eastern Bay Plenty doesn't appear anywhere in this plan, and you've got some new staff on board, and I've been assured that there will be some regional council resourcing towards the work, that severe work that needs to be done. Just interesting with um, Kirsty's presentation as to us before, I know for a fact that um, our percentage of people living with disabilities in the Eastern Bay exceeds the national average. So we have an extensive, we've, got, we've already got some work being done by by private means to see if we can address that. But you know, I, I just hope that I'm not going to be sitting here or whoever replaces me if I don't get elected just banging the table every month saying, what about me? Because seriously, um, we're really serious. I'm serious about seeing some progress on that. And um, and I've talked to my colleagues in Portuguese and Colorado, and they want me to keep banging the table, but I really would like to see us at least mentioned in the report as if, as if there is going to be a program of work developing something. I think if you read that, the, the plan that we're wanting to sign off today, you'll find that it is well and truly covered in there, which is um, the next item on our agenda. Councillor Thompson and then uh, Commissioner Selwood. Yes, thank you. And through you, Chair, um, a question in relation to the public transport services and infrastructure business case. How have our various communities been represented in the process to date? Uh, so through the chair, the work undertaken uh, to date has been high level in nature. Uh, we're about to commence the uh, single stage business case, uh, which has an extensive consultation element uh, within the, uh, the program of works there. So we will be engaging with uh, stakeholders uh, and the, uh, the community uh, throughout that process as we start to build up um, a deliverable plan um, to uh, to bring our business case to life. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Selwood. Thank you. I just wanted to um, acknowledge that the presentation uh, summarised by, um, uh, summarised today, was presented to the Joint Committee um, a couple of weeks ago and very well received, uh, certainly by TCC. Um, and, and in particular, the the customer centric kind of meeting people's needs uh, fundamental principle uh, underpinning the, the review. So I think that's a very positive thing. Um, and just to comment on Councillor Nee's uh, query regarding park and ride, um, I can confirm TCC is very um, interested in park and ride. It's a little bit of a chicken and egg conversation uh, because we need to have certainty about the routes and the permanency of the routes to make sure that the park and right investment works. Um, and so we're very much looking to this piece of work to define the locations for those park and rides to, um, to give effect to it. That was all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. There will be no further questions. Uh, we have a resolution on page 20. Um, that we received the report. I'm happy to move that. Seconded by Councillor Mees. All those in favour, please say aye. Against, carried. Uh, the last item before morning tea is the Barpeggy Regional Public Transport. Uh, 
Sorry, Chair. Um, we just, I thought um, we would come back to the Rotorua refresh. I just had a couple of questions about that. Let's, let's it'll come up in this next section anyway, in the plan, but unless you want to bring it up particularly now. Um, as long as there's an opportunity to have a, have a discussion about it. That's, I don't mind. Well, we'll do now. Yeah, let's. Um, okay, thank you very much. Um, just a couple of questions. Um, one was, do we have an idea of, of the time frame for the final implementation of the refresh? That was my first question. Um, you're kind of looking through it and adjusting things at the moment, but um, when do you think it will come into effect? Uh, through the chair, so uh, we had a really healthy response uh, when we went out and did our consultation uh, and we've really taken the time to try and incorporate uh, as much of that really valuable feedback from the local community as possible. Um, you'll see in the update that we've given that there are some uh, infrastructure challenges that we need to overcome um, and I think it's fair to say that, that all partners involved in this are, are, are really keen to, to try and resolve those as quickly as possible. Uh, given the, the nature uh, of those, uh, it's difficult for me to uh, to put a or commit to timescales today. Uh, but I, I would I would hope uh, that we're talking uh, first half of next year. But uh, I cannot commit today. But uh, partners are invested in, in working through those infrastructure challenges to bring this to life. Great, thank you. Because I'm aware that we're coming up to negotiating a new contract for for Rover as well, and that just leads me into my um, second question. Uh, well, actually, what I would say around those new routes and stuff is there needs to be a really thorough engagement with the public in Rotorua. Um, we, I was at a public meeting, uh, Councillor Thurston was there yesterday, and it was absolutely obvious that not only did people not use the bus service in Rotorua, they didn't even know about it. Um, so we do need to get that message out to them around cheap affairs around the fact that there are new routes, that there are more frequent trips, all that sort of stuff. Um, I just wanted to go on to the sustainable public transport framework, and I'm just wondering if that will be of assistance in the bus decarbonisation feasibility study, if those will be of assistance when we're working on that new contract, which is only a year or two away now, um, in terms of the possibility of getting electric buses into Rotorua, because I think, uh, you know, you have congestion in Tauranga, so that's a driver to get people on buses. We don't have that issue in Rotorua, and actually one of our lead items for getting people to use public transport will be around climate change, um, all those sorts of issues. So electrification is important, and I'm aware if we go into a new contract without it, we will then be 10 years down the track before we get it. So I'm just wondering, will that sustainability framework um, help um, the possibility of maybe council owning the buses to make it easier for a new um, operator to be able to electrify um, by using council buses? So are you looking into those sorts of scenarios? Through the chair, uh, absolutely. Uh, so the, the decarbonisation study that staff are currently undertaking is a, a roots and branch look at all uh, possible technologies to assist with the Bay of Plenty's journey to decarbonisation. And I should say that goes beyond electrification. So uh, there are other viable technologies out there, such as such as hydrogen and yeah. uh, other useful things, such as uh, by uh, or synthetic diesel as well. So there's there's all sorts of options out there that, that could support our, our journey to zero emissions. Uh, and the reason that we are doing that piece of work now is so that we are as informed as possible uh, going into those conversations um, and those contracts renewals uh, over the coming years. So, so absolutely those two things are linked. And, and, and hopefully we can be looking at solutions um, before that contract renewal for Rotorua. I just thought, you know, it's the first contract we have coming up and it is very soon. I, I don't want to uh, sort of predicate the, the findings um, of that study because uh, they get to be presented to this council. Uh, but we, uh, yeah, we will be exploring uh, all opportunities um, and uh, I want this, this review to be impartial and, and give the council a an impartial view uh, on, on what technologies uh, are likely to help us with our aspirations uh, and then how we, we integrate that uh, going forwards with our respective operations. 
Thank you. Thank you for your yeah. thank, thank you for that. Um, and just to be clear, with with the the need, the government. Um, direction on decarbonisation. We don't have it. We won't have a choice. And, and the time, the time <coughs> suits very well for the um, for overall. I would say. Let, we move on now to um, the regional public transport plan, uh, and it has been deliberated on. Uh, and I just bronze coming to the table. I just want to take this. Bron, to thank you in particular and you and all your staff um, for the work that you've done to actually, this was a, a, um, uh, a huge amount of work in a very short period of time, as far as not, not the original drafting, but the, the amendments that we um, put you under pressure for to, with very tight time frames to, to meet the end of this training. So I, I do want to recognise uh, that we are, as a committee, really appreciative of the work that you and your staff have done on this. Just in um, talking about this plan, um, to say that we um, we heard the submitters uh, and we um, uh, they they were very very impassioned that we should be more ins uh, aspirational and innovative. And um, and as well as that customer focus, those were the three big things that, that our submitters spoke to us. And I think we've actually answered that in the plan. And thank you for, for getting the words right for that. Um, I note, I, I also want to comment on the fact that we, uh, this document is an enabling document. So it doesn't tie us down to, to necessarily um, specific things that we have to do, but it enables us, and because it's a 10-year document, uh, to actually move quite strongly on, on those things uh, that will encourage customer focus, innovation and aspiration. So uh, thank you, staff, and thank you to the hearings committee who put a, um, a big effort in on this. And I open it up now for a Greg, do you want to say anything before you? Sure. Thank you, Chair. Well, uh, just make a few comments, although I feel uh, I probably don't deserve to because I wasn't here for the, the construct of the plan. I um, certainly was um, fortunate to be part of the submissions and the deliberations on the submissions. Just from my point of view, um, seeing what we have in front of um, you as members of this committee, um, be sure that we had, uh, I, from what I saw, very high quality and high energy, actually, um, submissions uh, uh, to the plan. Most a lot of the, um, the theme I found listening to the um, particularly the verbal submissions was a call for boldness and more energy and more aspiration. Um, and we have tried to reflect that um, in the plan, particularly in the front end. We'll see the two front pages. We've tried to sort of do a bit of a synopsis and give a sense of you know, plan can be no offense, Brian, but can be quite plodding through because we have to do what we have to do in a plan. So we try to put some words up front to, to give the sense of emotion and drive and energy that we see coming through from this um, enabling plan. And you'll see if you sort of summarize the plan in just a few words, we try to put some words up front there about it's really all about connecting the bay and it's all about more access and, and less carbon. Um, that's really what if you capture the essence of this plan, that's uh, what it's all about. So yeah, a really good process, and I think some very, very good submissions have helped us to land a good plan. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Ron. Ron. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Chair, and, and thank you, Greg. Uh, thanks for those nice words, uh, Chair. Uh, morning to members of the committee. Um, I just, I guess, I'll probably largely take the report as read. Um, you'll see it summarises the public consultation process that the hearing subcommittee went through. Um, since this committee signed off the draft at its last meeting. <coughs> Excuse me. That includes hearings and deliberations in August and early September. Um, you will see from the, from the documentation that the hearing subcommittee um, has recommended quite a substantial number of changes to the draft document. Um, and these are summarised in the report and are shown in track changes in the attached document. We also see that the report includes two sets of recommendations, uh, one from the hearing subcommittee to this committee, 
and then one, a second set from the Public Transport Committee uh, to the Regional Council um, as per the legislative process. Um, aside from recommending changes to the plan itself, the, this hearing subcommittee has made a, a couple of additional recommendations, um, and these have implications for funding levels set in, in the Regional Council's long-term plan, so therefore um, these will need to be carried through to the Regional Council, and this report does that. Um, just uh, in terms of the recommendations, I would like to suggest uh, one minor wording change to Recommendation 3 uh, from the Public Transport Committee to the Regional Council. Um, having had another look at the, the detail in the legislation, um, my advice would be to replace the word approves with adopts, um, just to replicate the exact wording um, that appears in the Act. Other than that, uh, that's yeah, okay. open to questions or, or comments. Thank you, Bron. I've got a question from uh, Councillor Thurston and Councillor needs to follow. Uh, thank, thank you, Chairman. Um, as I said in other forums, um, my big regret through all of this was that uh, all my colleagues didn't have an opportunity um, <laughs> as to know the reasons why to hear the submitters. Um, I do believe um, that we answered the call. Uh, we're on the right track. Uh, I think we clearly listened to our communities. Uh, we were challenged to be aspirational and uh, were given a, clear, a green light to go forward. Um, and as previous speakers have said, we were challenged, and you also said, Chairman, we were challenged to be bold. But um, I, th I think uh, the hearing committee uh, in its report, uh, we have addressed the call to um, bring in transformational change and to be bold. Emissions have been addressed, smaller buses on demand, huge strong interest came through from the submitters in terms of on demand, new innovations and in technology. Uh, and once again, if I can just wave a flag for the disability community and the less mobile who made huge uh, headway uh, in this trium and also made some very substantial and um, quite sensitive uh, presentations to us. But no, Chairman, I'm happy to put my name to this. But as I said, um, I do hope that all colleagues will swing in behind and support it. Um, and uh, can I also send my personal thanks to Commissioner Selwood because a lot of the issues that came up were around bus stops and shelters and of course he was in a position to say that these are going to be accelerated by TCC and their LTP so uh, it was good to have us there and also Mayor Turner so kia ora Chairman. Thank you. I don't think there's a need for a response from staff on that. Councillor Nees. Um, thank you. I'd just like to uh, echo the thanks to staff um, who really supported the hearings um, subcommittee really well. Um, I note that one of the recommendations is for the chief executive to have the authority to make minor changes to the document um, prior to its approval uh, by the regional council. There were two items I raised with the chair um, and staff last night, uh, which were brought to my attention by a member of the public. And I'd just like clarification of those, if that's possible, in case they do need um, some adjustment to the document. The first one is re with regard to the target for mode share, um, which re relates to the main urban areas. And the question was, is that just Tonga and Rotorua, um, or does it include Whakatane? So I think we need to be clear about what we refer to um, there. And also um, whether that mode share target is for total mode share or for morning peak or if there's a, a specificity um, around that target. Um, so that was one question. And the other one is a, an apparent um, inconsistency in the plan where mostly we talk about um, uh, changing mode share um, to 20%. But one part of the plan on page 20, that's 2.1.3, still talks about increased mode share by 20%, which is quite a different thing. So I think we need to be consistent on that. So if, if staff could um, just pick up on those points, answer us if they can now. If not, um, please do some further work on it. Thank you. Yes, can I say that it's, um, that's 
why is it a delegated authority to the CEO if there are the, it is an inconsistency found between to and um, by um, the twenty percent? So, uh, Bron, do you want to respond to that? Uh, thank you, yeah, through the chair. Um, so, just on the on the on the second point, I guess. Um, uh, to 20% as opposed to by 20%. Um, so the by 20% target is actually the, refer the target reference from our regional land transport plan. Um, so that's basically a reference from a pre-existing plan rather than a target in our plan. And I think we recognise that in the plan that we've got uh, a lot of work to do to um, align all of our targets regionally and sub-regionally with what's going on nationally. Um, and I think, uh, probably in reference to the first point, um, what came out of the, the hearing subcommittee, or the intent coming out of the hearing subcommittee, was to have that aspirational high-level target, yet recognising that we still need to do a lot of technical work, and I think the, the wording in the plan recognises that, um, and that we may need to change the plan once that work is completed. Um, in terms of uh, timeframes for the for the targets, uh, 2032 versus. The question was, which areas are we including as the main urban areas? Um, I guess Rotorua and, and Tauron are our, our main urban areas, and that's where our main urban ne networks are. Thank you. Mayor Turner? Um, I'm very disappointed, but I'm encouraged by a couple of things. I'm encouraged by Greg being now on the team. Um, you know, got good faith in you and in, in a new team that you're bringing with you. Um, I, I think this we lack specificity around what's planned for the Eastern Bay Plenty. We could get here in three years' time and it looks no different, or six years' time it looks no different. I'd like to encourage the regional council to consider having one of their Eastern Bay Plenty councillors on this committee from from after the election onwards. I think we need another voice, and as well as um, an Eastern Bay Plenty uh, council rep representative like myself. Of, as well, um, because I just hate to see that it's, it's vague and, and and generic, and I would just like to see it being a lot more specific with some more measurable outcomes. I am really glad, glad that we've got that the couple, uh, regional council have got you on board and your team. That looks like um, that, that's what happens to me. I, I believe that you're going to make a difference. I just like to, to see some more specific outcomes um, in three years' time for Eastern Bay. Thank you. I think that's noted. Uh, Commissioner Selwood. Thank you. Um, I think for the benefit of the uh, members of the committee that weren't on the sub uh, committee, I think it's worth noting that we did have some robust conversations about the aspirational 20% uh, target. Um, and I think it's fair to say we all recognise the significance of that shift. The mode shift, uh, the mode share for public transport is currently 1.3 percent. So this is a enormous step change, and I think that is recognition of the fact that we have an enormous uh, need to make a step change, and this uh, plan is about uh, establishing that. Um, included in that will be the funding and financing challenge and the plan now includes quite considerable discussion of the need for a quantum shift um, in both central government and local government funding uh, to enable us to get anywhere near um, the targets that we are talking about um, and that quantum shift has to come not only to support mode shift but to support our carbon uh, emissions reduction targets that are required of the region. So I don't think anyone um, considers that this will be an easy task. Uh, it will be an enormous task. It will require new ways of delivering services such as on-demand innovation um, and a real customer focus but it will also in my view require policy changes in around uh, how we pay for and um, charge for road use. Um, if we don't achieve those sorts of changes, then our ability to deliver on these aspirational targets will be, I suspect, almost impossible. Um, so with that, I guess, proviso, um, I certainly give the, the support to the plan, um, noting the significance and size of the challenge that we have before us.
Thank you. There's no question in there, just a statement. Um, so no need for a response. Uh, any further? No further. Um, so before I put the the, um, the recommendations, um, Mr. Thomas, you're getting exorbitantly late with your. <laughs> I'm very sorry, Chair. Um, just a just a quick comment. Um, I was pleased to see that there was a discussion around inter-regional travel as well as just urban travel. I think that's really important and, and you know, um, one thing I would like to see is a network link between Rotorua and Whakatane. We've got the start of that link between Rotorua and Tauranga, but um, we're a triangle here in, in Bay Plenty and it would open up um, transport for a lot of communities into both urban areas if we had that link, especially, um, you know, a, a commuter um, service in the mornings and evenings. Thank you. Councillor McDonald, were you wanting to speak? I, I saw your hand waving a minute ago. Okay. Um, all I was saying at the end, just to wind this up before we put it to the vote, um, we, we do need to recognise that, uh, and it's detailed in the plan, that we um, have a, a we, we've really pulled the lever on um, fear reduction, um, and we can't we as we go forward, we have to think very carefully how 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 we further operate that because right now we have fifteen million dollars with the funding that comes. To um, for the regional council um, rate payers, and it's mainly targeted rates. So it's, it's predominantly coming out of our rate payers, and and across the whole region, we're only collecting two point seven million in a um, in fears. So um, while I think we all agree that we needed to pull the lever, um, it's a it's a lever that. Um, we have to be cognizant of because there, there comes a question of affordability for ratepayers if we don't get balanced. There. Did you want to say? You're right. We'll see. So um, with that, I'm going to um, ask for somebody to move. First of all, the recommendation um, uh, that the Public Transport Committee uh, do one to five, and that's from the the recommendation from the hearings panel to the to this committee. Um, moved by uh, Councillor Nees. Happy the second, Chairman. What? This Happy the second. Oh, sorry, I just got to hit the vote. You're not looking at us on the TV monitors. I'm happy to second, Chairman. I heard that. I heard that. I'm just getting a clarification from our... First five of the Public Council Committee recommendations to accept. To move in second, and the second five are uh, public transport So, okay, so the first five which you've agreed to, we've got to move her in a second, are for the, um, this committee to accept, and then we'll go on for this committee to recommend to a full council. So, the one to five of, on page 31 are the mover and second still happy to move? You're happy to second? Yeah, moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favour, please say aye. Um, knees and then Thurston. Anybody against? Who? That's it, yeah. No, she's fine. Uh, Carrie, the second recommendation uh, that the Public Transport Committee re recommends to the Regional Council, and that is one to five also, with the amendment on number three that moves, changes the word approves to adopts, as Ron uh, highlighted, we need to just to be consistent with the re uh, regulations. So is anybody prepared to move that? Moved by Councillor Nee, seconded by Councillor Thompson. Is there any discussion on that? I'll put it to the vote. All in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, carried. With that, thank you, people. That's um, 
a huge thing to get through for us. Um, and I'll give you a morning tea right now, and we'll be back um, in a quarter of an hour. You can see the staff all smiling. Hey? And it's not because of morning tea. <laughs> can, <laughs> can I say that we, um, I've got down here 10.40 morning tea, and it is 10.40. Cool, <laughs> so we got up and we Thank you. Thank everybody for that.
Those on Zoom, please turn your cameras on so we can see if we've got a quorum. We have, we have a quorum. The time is in, um, what is it, 10.57. No, I'll start. Okay, we're back in session, thank you. So we now move to the um, highlights of the Triennium, page 151. Uh, can I just um, thank staff, I've done that already, but Greg, um, can you make sure you thank your staff? Because I think there's been a real step up in uh, engagement with staff and, and we're starting to get some really good out, outcomes. Can I also make mention and make a special thanks as it's the last meeting of Councillor Thompson, who joins me on the Joint Tauranga Public Transport Committee with Tauranga City. And Stephen, you and Anne are the other two uh, commissioners on that, and I have really enjoyed working with you. We, we had our frustrations at the start, but I think we are actually starting to see progress in the last meeting we had uh, showed some significant collaboration between our two organisations at, a, at, at an operational level. And that's what we're aiming to do. I, we, we won't uh, achieve what we want to achieve without genuine collaboration. Um, and um, so I want to please pass on my thanks to both uh, Anne as well as yourself and to your staff, because I think, I think we are making some real progress there. Um, for me, the, my highlight for the year has been to see the B card um, introduced, which was last year, but it's only this year that we're actually getting the benefit and starting to see the, the really good data that we can generate out of that B card where we can drill in and actually look at um, things in detail and get outcomes. And I encourage members of this committee who want to um, get trained up on, on the, uh, the dashboard. Um, it is a fantastic um, asset to this council. And um, so without any further ado, I'll hand that over to Greg. Well, Henry, again, thank you for that. And um, of all the people in this room, um, members, I'm probably the least qualified to, to comment on uh, highlights of the training, given I've only been here for just a short while. Um, I would just say one thing, though, um, which includes observations for me from outside the council, so before I did join. Um, my primary reflection, actually, is how this council and this committee uh, managed through the COVID experience, and particularly in the last year. And I really commend you on that. And you know, I have no doubt, uh, members of this committee, you're aware of just what it does take behind the scenes to keep things going. You know, we see all the problems, we see all the issues, we see the driver shortages that kind of come with that. Um, but basic services have been maintained in the city and the region, and that has not been by accident. It's been by enormous efforts uh, behind the scenes by your staff. So you know, certainly from my perspective, that would be the main reflection I have and acknowledging both the uh, members of this committee, the council and, um, and the staff for, for doing that. I guess the other reflection um, I have is, when, since I've joined is that I see a new energy within the regional council to organise transport differently and have a different approach to um, to transport and to take the rightful space where it's appropriate um, to lead outcomes as well. And the mandate they've given me of bringing together the team and getting the team working well together for the good of the region and for all the uh, authorities in the region um, has been a huge excitement for me. It's been really great to, to bring together. So, you know, no, that's my brief reflection. I'm going to be here for five minutes, but uh, yeah, certainly that's my... Um, I don't know if any of the staff want to make any further comments. Probably enough. Seth, there. And I'll hand back to the chair for any further comment from members. Thank you. Any, any members want to uh, make a comment? Can I just note, uh, before we, we uh, call for that, that uh, both um, Councillor Love and McDonald have now, uh, while they weren't members of this committee, um, did have speaking rights and um, they've, they've both left um, the meeting. So just so that can be recorded. And welcome to our uh, regional chair, Doug. 
Uh, thank you for attending. Uh, any any one want to make a comment with regards to uh, the training and the achievements? There being none, I'll move that we receive the report. All those in, oh, I need a seconder. Seconder, Councillor Brunning. All those in favour, please say aye. Against, carried. Then we move now to the Arataki report, page 155. This will be the one last time we do have a presentation, so Chris Burrow will take us through that operation plan. Thank you, Chris. Morena uh, Koto, yeah, called Chris Purotokawingua. I am uh, currently the Interim uh, Transport Operations Manager. Uh, today we would like to uh, have this report as, as received and I'll be providing a, about a 10 minute uh, presentation on uh, the performance monitoring for the, uh, the period 1 July 2021 through to uh, the 30th of June of this year. And this presentation will just cover a, a high level summary of uh, the report that you'll find within the agenda. Now, apologies to uh, Simon, who's, who's kind of the face behind this report and, and his team. Uh, so uh, he's away ill today. I um, just want to yeah, thank, uh, thank the team um, and also the members for the, the feedback we received following the last PTC. Um, the, the data and the insights that are available to us now uh, continue to grow from, from strength to strength. So thank you for your feedback. You hopefully receive uh, see some of that feedback reflected uh, in this this current report. Uh, just note all numbers that are referenced throughout uh, in relation to the numbers that are contained within the pages in the agenda report. In terms of uh, financial performance, uh, this is on page one six two. I'll just draw your attention to the uh, the bolded line on the, on the slide there, on the table on the left hand side. So. Uh, we uh, ended the, the full year with a total operating uh, deficit of a uh, touch over 2 million, uh, being a favourable experience uh, for all of the reasons outlined on the right hand side there uh, that are detailed. But essentially, uh, we had an operating revenue at the end of uh, quarter four, uh, being 3 million lower than budget, and an operating expenditure at the end of quarter four being uh, 5.1 million lower than budget. <clears throat> in terms of uh, patronage summary, you'll find a, more of a detailed breakdown, pages 163 through to 170. Uh, so in the fourth quarter, we had a touch under 626,000 boardings, which was down from 9.5% on the previous year. Uh, so an interesting stat there is that this time last year, that, that figure was 17%. We were down 17%. So Although, yes, we're still down, we are seeing a marked improvement. In terms of the full year, we had uh, slightly under 2.25 million trips taken, down 15.4% on the previous year, uh, which, which has meant, unfortunately, we're, we're not on track with, the, with our full year measure, being the number of passenger trips taken in the region. We do want to be somewhere up around the 2.6 uh, plus mark. Uh, and, and as requested previous, in a previous meeting, uh, we have included a new chart in the report, it's, uh, which covers the patronage by type uh, throughout the region. And that's on page 163. Uh, just noting that that data that, uh, which creates that chart is, is RITS only data and excludes the school hopper. Moving across the region, uh, pages 164 through to 167. In the Tauranga area, we had 515,000 trips taken in the last quarter, uh, again down 15.6% this time last year. In the urban network, 311,000 trips taken, uh, down uh, so 19% this time last year. Uh, again, it remains um, essentially due to the fact that we're on a weekend timetable, 
due to driver availability, which uh, remains a significant issue across the other regions as well. We did manage to maintain a security coverage, which continued seven days a week at Willow and Farm Streets. Uh, and more of a good news story in terms of schools, we had 204,000 trips taken, which is up 1% on the uh, fourth quarter. And notably, that is the, the highest quarter since the inception of the Bay Hopper uh, school bus network, which leaves us at 1.3% uh, uh, lower than the whole of the previous year. So we are starting to see some encouraging signs there. Further across the region, uh, Rotorua. Uh, this is on one, one, page 168 of the agenda. There were 86,000 trips taken in quarter four. Uh, pleasing to see that was up 3.3% on the previous year. Uh, and if you refer to the graph at the bottom of the slide, uh, the, the second half of the graph on the right-hand side, uh, we can see, so that reflects months May and June. And um, we can see that we're up on the same months in the previous year by 10 and 6% respectively. And that was following 10, uh, 10 months of year on year decline. So yeah, some pleasing results there. And what, while, it, while it may be difficult to draw a firm conclusion at this stage, it does appear that there's been a sustained uptake uh, of the 50% uh, free fares initiative. And we've crunched some numbers into the first quarter of this financial year. And it's pleasing to see that this trend is continuing into July and August. So we're uh, keeping a keen eye on those numbers. Uh, further across the region, the Eastern Bay of Pliny, again, uh, some pleasing results. Uh, 8,100 trip, trips taken in the fourth quarter, up 17.1% uh, this time last year. And that has left us at uh, being up again, uh, just over 2% on the full uh, previous year. And uh, we think that is uh, largely in relation to the, the additional colour route being added in May uh, of last year. Uh, some other highlights. <clears throat> so on page 171 of the agenda, you'll, you'll see a, a chart there, the Tauranga Urban Bus Patronage by Week. Uh, we can see that we saw an increase of 16.5% on the three weeks preceding uh, the 50% free fares initiative becoming effective. However, following this, there was a downward trend, and that is due to the uh, April school holidays, as well as the general seasonality trends, which are also being experienced in other regions such as Otago and uh, Waikato. Uh, it was uh, pleasing to see that we have seen a sustained increase in uh, Rotorua, since the, the 1st of April date, and that this initiative has been extended through the 31st of January of next year, and then will be followed immediately by the implementation of the Community uh, Connect program uh, from the 1st of February. Other highlights, <clears throat> so this is found on page 172, and just note that the data behind this is specifically uh, for the, the period one February onwards, during peak times. Uh, so yeah, pleasing here is that the, the school care free trial in Rotorua and the Eastern Bay of Pliny has shown some great uh, comparative growth for the school year to date uh, compared to this time last year. So uh, for Rotorua, we were up 58.1% on the, on the previous year in the, the quarter four. And uh, in the Pakatane or Portski area, uh, up 15.6% on the previous year. So, and again, we've crunched the numbers into the first quarter of this financial year and really pleasing to see that uh, that trend is continuing. In terms of customer experience, <clears throat> this is found on page 174 and 175. We have included some new charts as requested uh, last time, which shows a breakdown in the types of complaints that we're receiving. Uh, so if you look at those, those charts, you'll see that they're largely in relation to the timeliness of the service, uh, time, may, yeah, mainly around timetables. Uh, so we received 4,600 transport-related calls through council, being 41% of, of all the calls. In the Tauranga and Rotorua area, we received about, on average, 
uh, seven complaints per 10,000 boardings. And uh, those numbers seem to uh, level off, uh, flatten um, from between quarter three and quarter four. So further on this, so behind this, this graph here, this is in relation to uh, quarter four. Uh, there, so this is in relation to quarter four, and there were about 5,660 uh, Zendesk tickets created. And on the right hand side there, you can see the type of types of tickets that were created uh, within that. So complaints make up about 10%. Uh, and I would just point out, and we probably sell ourselves a little bit short with this, but in terms of the other category, 12%, uh, a lot of those actually contain compliments, which is uh, pleasing to see. So perhaps something we can uh, work on in terms of painting more of a, a positive light on those. And I do really just want to pause and uh, uh, give some kudos to our uh, customer contact team. Uh, over the quarter four period, they only had to forward three percent of all the all these calls through to our team for further investigation, uh, and that's that's on top of the, the massive influx they've had in terms of rates uh, related calls. So that's about 170 calls of those 5,600 that they've. Um, needed to forward on, which means 97% of all the transport related um, tickets that they received uh, were, were responded to, resolved and passed on to customers. So in terms of the numbers of uh, the touch points within council that customers are having to go through, um, yeah, it's a, it's a massive effort from them. So just passing on some thanks. Uh, and finally, I'd like to just finish on a, on a high and on a positive here in the total mobility and accessibility space. These stats show, when you, particularly when you compare them to the previous quarters throughout the year, that we are reaching more and more of our vulnerable communities. Uh, so we had a, um, we've seen that we've had a 35% increase in the number of total mobility trips taken between uh, when you compare quarter four and, and quarter three. Uh, and likewise, uh, we've, we've seen about a 2,300 more access, accessibility concession trips taken, uh, which equates to about 12% uh, increase. So again, some really positive signs in this space. I'll uh, finish there and happy to take any questions. Can I just ask, the, the total mobility trips, does that, does that include um, disability services on our um, actual buses or is that, that the separate total mobility service. So that includes um, all of, all of our total total mobility uh, services. So not not just onto not just the bus network. Yeah, it's both. Questions, Councillor Mays. Well, thank you. Um, I'm really looking forward to having a training course um, on how to access the data. But have we noticed an increase in Tauranga on Wednesdays in bus uh, usage? As a result of the Wednesday challenge, it might be something we can we can pull out in the session afterwards. I unfortunately don't have that information on hand. I, I did um, pull that out myself, and there, there is Wednesday is normally um, slightly higher going back historically than other days, um, but um, it's indiscernible that any increase on a on a Wednesday. It, it, so, um, uh, like within a hundred. So, um, yeah, that's the evidence that I, because I didn't pull out specifically Wednesdays going back a year and a half and compared. Uh, Council, uh, Thurston. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Just drawing colleagues' attention to this slide that's up at the moment, the accessibility concession that since going live on the 1st of July, 2021 last year um, just look at the 22,000 trips that these profoundly disabled people have made who would otherwise have not been engaging uh, or accessing their community I think it's a huge tribute to the council and everyone who pushed for this initiative thanks Jimmy thank you any further questions comments there have been none we'll go back to um, Page. 
155 and um, we should have a recommendation on page 156 to receive the report. I'm happy to move that, cut second about council on these. Any discussion that being none, all in favour, please say aye. Against, carried. <coughs> so we move. Um, we are now um, got one last item um, on page 187, which is a, yeah, yeah. So um, can I have a mover? I'll move that we move. In